Hello there, and welcome to the first ever The Affiliate School Live. I am not nervous in the slightest, but I am, I, you know, it's my pleasure to be joined actually by, by Jamie IF, and that just takes the pressure off me a little <laughs> bit. So, hello and welcome to everyone watching the live stream. Uh, we're hoping we're not going to have too many technical issues, but hello to Jamie. How's it going, Jamie? Not bad. Thank you for having me on. It's a, a nice time. First, first live, and I'm I'm guesting, so I'm taking that as a as a positive. Uh, and I'm I'm learning here as well. I've never done something like this before, so I'm gonna enjoy the learning experience. Absolutely. Well, you are the star of the show, really, today. Um, and this kind of follows on from the back of a video that we published two weeks ago. So, uh, do you know what? I've got a, I've got a nice little intro video to that so i'm not going to talk too much about that we're going to go to that in a second um first of all i mean i've just come back from bangkok i don't know how you are but i'm i'm like one week back from bangkok where it was 33 degrees Ooh. and it's like minus three now in the uk and obviously we're brits we like to talk about the weather what's it like where you are because where i am the, the place is covered in snow yeah it's um it's the schools cancelled in london like we're in my area of london yesterday just because it was snowing so much and it was like you know six inches of snow they got in but it only oh, started on sunday evening which is lucky because i was out on saturday night and only got like back on like the afternoon the next day because we just uh, crashed at a friend's house so i got away with it just i could have been snowed out for like two days and missed this live wow unreal unreal right we've got a few people watching we've got a few people that have uh that have come over from Twitter as well, I think. It was really nice of Joe at Niche Campus to, to say, uh, don't screw it up. So thanks for that, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nerves are, are already here. But um, do you know what? I think, I think we've got enough people in. I think we'll get things started. We're going to waste time and hang about. Um, so you haven't seen this, Jamie, but I've put together a lovely little video to recap the conversation that we had a couple of weeks ago. So uh, let's, let's take a look at it. The search intent is like, yeah, this person is looking for this. So basically it's S-P-E-A-R. But audience drills into that more. And you have to think, what is this person looking for exactly? What's their burning need? And is it like one level deeper? Now, Jamie, what I'm going to do or attempt to do is to take your framework and write a, an intro, which is probably redefining my idea of an intro. Okay, <laughs> do, you, do you like that, Jamie? I'll that was great. What. That was so above my actual, like importance that I, i'll take that <laughs> joe at niche campus said matrix yes jason he liked that so uh yeah but i'll tell you what it's i think it's going to be a really interesting uh session today because off the back of that video i did go away i, I listened to the spear framework that you talked about and i know you've talked about this on on niche pursuits you talked about it on twitter you talked about it on that video and I went away and tried to actually put it into practice. And I thought I'd done an okay job until you then ripped it to shreds. So what we're going to do today job. in this video? I thought video... it was good. Oh, okay, okay, thanks. So in this video, we're going to, um, yeah, we're going to go through it, aren't we? And you're going to tell us you've edited the the intro that I put together. So I don't know. Do you want to share your screen and and let's take a look? We've got the, I think we've got that ready, haven't we? There we go. Oh sure, yeah, it should be ready. So you if you want to kind of, it. yeah, so. I suppose to put the context to it, I, I think I was just about to go to Thailand, wasn't I? So I'd kind of got that in my head. So I thought, let's write a, a kind of fictitious, uh, just a, as an example, uh, a piece, an intro for the best Thai SIM cards to buy if you are in the UK, which is kind of a strange thing to write about. But uh, yeah, I tried to write it with the Spear framework in mind. So I don't know if you need to kind of recap Spear or very quickly and then or if you want to embed that as we kind of discuss it. Sure, we can do. So it's S is the search or user intent. P is pain points, E is expertise, A is audience, and R is rapport. And there are okay, bits cool. that obviously... Yeah. And, and, and obviously in that, 
Yeah, and in the, the, the video that we did last time, obviously you went through that and explained that in quite a lot of detail. So if people haven't seen that, do be sure to go and check that. Also make sure you check out Jamie's Twitter profile, Jamie underscore IF, because he does go in and explain that in quite a lot of detail. Um, and I, I think what, what appealed to me about this was that it can be applied to, I think, almost any type of content, uh, whether it's review, info, buyer's guide, whatever type of content it is, I think it can be applied. So obviously I tried to apply it here um, and, and what you see I think on the left of the screen is the, the finished piece that you then re-edited and on the right was, uh, was my piece that you edited. Um, so obviously all the crossed out stuff is what you replaced. So it looks like there's a lot of crossing out there, Jamie. <laughs> so for the record, like if a, a writer had given me this, there'd be not many edits on it just because like there needs to be a certain threshold to be like, oh, I'll actually step in there because like the value of your time and stuff like that but for this I thought I'd just be like super annoying and every time I saw something that even like as minuscule as it could be I thought I'd point out just in case it was helpful just to just like create more conversation so this intro is better than the large majority of intros that you see online like top one two percentile but I figured I'll we'd go through that. and we'll take uh, that <laughs> <laughs> but I figured that I'd just uh, and hopefully I can remember what I uh what I meant to write uh, and my feedback instead of just forgetting because uh, I did this a week or so ago. So um, we'll have to go through this and see what we can what we can turn up. Sure thing. So uh, so let's let's start at the beginning then. So um, I mean, I always try and get a, a keyword into uh, that first kind of paragraph or so, um, but also at the same time try and make it engaging. So how good or bad a job did I do with that? Sure. So, uh, well, I mean, you're the original one here is crossed out, but I can read it out if you'd like. So it was finding a Thai SIM card to buy in the UK is no easy task. Got that in the right in the beginning, first sentence, first paragraph. Yeah, that's the issue. 20... <laughs> <laughs> but in my 21 years of traveling across these eight, East Asia, I found if I'm likely to go heavy on data or I know I need to be well connected from the moment I land and backing a SIM card before traveling is a worthwhile pursuit. Um, you then, and there's two more bits below here that are, um, that I, uh, that I basically rewrote into this one bit here where you say, and when traveling outside of Europe, I'd go as far as to say it's an essential part of my pre-travel prep. Sure. You can buy your Thai SIM card upon arrival rather than purchase it in the UK. And then we go into the next bit. So my feedback was, um, basically I condensed it into one smaller bit. Um, this the finding a Thai SIM card to buy in the UK is no easy task. It's fine, but it's it's written for an SEO rather than a human. Um, yeah, and which is yeah. fine, right? It's it's not gonna like no one's gonna read that. Only we know enough about this stuff to be skeptical when we read something like that. The average person doesn't care, and we'll probably find that valuable. But if you can do that whilst also having more of like an emotive connection, because you really don't have that long to make an emotional connection with the reader once you've gone there. So ideally, if you can do that whilst bringing in any scenarios or anything like that, um, as well as like instantly showing that you are the person to listen to, I think you can do that quicker. So on the left side, I sort of condensed that and tried to make it a little bit quicker as well and save a few words mm -hmm. for just to keep the momentum up. So I changed that from in my 20 years of ups and downs, ups and downs sort of like being a, a, a humility element, right? Because you're not just saying that you're the perfect travel person that gets everything right. You're saying you've been through the ups and downs, which is a, a likability thing, as well as cementing yourself as an authority. Uh, I found out the hard way, again, it's more of like humility. I've made all the mistakes so you can listen to me because I've been through the, the rough bits and the good bits. I found out the hard way that landing unprepared can be a nightmare. Nightmare is a powerful word because you can sort of, uh, you know, it's pain points if the spear framework is the P. Um, you can then sort of make the reader understand, like, and we go further into this, right, where we talk about the scenarios of like, getting left with no data and no way of contacting people and missing the, we bring in scenarios like business trips, holidays and stuff that trying to hit every segment. But um, nightmare is just a powerful negative word to use to anchor expectations and make people pay more attention to the problem that you're trying to illustrate for them there. So, and then I kind of do the SEO thing after and go, this makes finding the best Thai SIM card in the UK to buy absolutely key. Um, doing this, it also makes it a bit shorter than, uh, I mean, this ends up being like six and a half lines. This ends up being a bit shorter than that, uh, under four lines. So you can keep getting into the main bit. So what, what you want to do is you want to win them over. 
you want to gain trust, and then you want to show them the options as soon as they're ready to take action. And that depends when and what type of product it is. You know, good luck with a really high ticket industrial product. Uh, you know, you'll need a lot. <laughs> you need a long buyer's guide before the product information. Um, but for this, I don't think it's a super high customer activation energy thing. So I think that you don't need that much information before you stick the big top picks here. Uh, and which I haven't, I could have screenshotted something, but I just wrote, these are the top three things that if you've got mm -hmm. Lasso, then I recommend you use because Lasso is, in my opinion, the best sort of product display tool, or you can make your own, or you can, I think Elementor has one, uh, you know, you can design these things yourself, but they, these are the most key bits in getting quick conversions, especially for lower activation goods, because if you're going to write best super glue, does anyone actually care or do they just want to be told what's best? I think that they don't want to read on. So these things are worth like 80% of your conversions. If you're going to do it on a higher activation thing, that's got more of an emotive cost of being wrong, then obviously you uh, be prepared to give more information. But for something like this, I don't think people have a super deep connection with Thai SIM cards. I think they just want to be told what's right, trust that you're an expert and then go and make that purchase safe in the knowledge that they trust someone who knows more than them. So for this- So would you, would you actually say that could go higher up then, maybe underneath yeah. that, that first paragraph, yeah? Yeah, in fact, if I do this again, this is two paragraphs to kind of expound on the same point. You know, yeah. I, I guess I don't feel like I'm confident enough here because I go, I try and prove to you that I really know my stuff. You might have experienced this before, stranded, running around desperately trying to reconnect to the world. Um, maybe that in itself is overkill. Maybe you reserve that for a higher activation good uh, and or product or service or whatever and put that even higher or just try and get a couple of these scenarios into here. Um, but what this does do is, okay, well, let me read this one first and I'll explain how I got okay. to that. So I say, trust me, buying a SIM, trust me in itself is like, a, you can't only say that if it's a confident thing to say, right? It's a confident value judgment. You don't say trust me if you don't know your stuff. Trust me, buying a SIM once you've landed in Thailand is no easy feat. And getting it registered and activated is even harder. Not to mention you could end up spending way more in data just finding one. And that's without considering international roaming connection issues. So you're just sort of seeding the the worries, the paranoia of being left without signal and whatever. Is a, uh, you can motivate people to take action to avoid negative consequences far easier than you can for positive gains. Uh, because people are risk averse fundamentally. And so that's just sort of seeding that. I then try and expound upon this in the third paragraph, which is you might have experienced this before. Stranded, running around desperately. Desperately is obviously another negative connotations yeah. word that's like, I'm going to be stressed out. No one wants to associate travel with stress because the, the thing about not going on holiday is it's a comfortable thing. You know what you're going to get. You know you're going to go home at five o'clock after work every day. There's a comfort to it, but you seek to escape that when you go on holiday because you want something new and fresh. But that is inherently stressful. So you want to, like, if you're trying to sell something that's a long line with travel stress, you seed all of the uncertainty words in there, right? Desperately running around trying to reconnect to the world. Losing precious minutes of your holiday or business trip. Instead, buying your SIM card in advance, risk averse comfort, puts you at ease. So you can head straight to the beach, cocktail in hand, or walking into that meeting stress-free with everything in check. You probably don't need these. And I, if you're going to write this article, I would recommend doing further research on what type of person is searching for this the most. Is it more catered to business people or holidays? Because what I've done there is without proper research, just trying to hit all at once. But I've spent an extra sentence doing that to try and catch more segments, which might have been overkill. Um, so the more research, really, the more you can condense these things while still being like brutally effective in who you're trying to target, uh, which I hadn't done here. And so this can be tweaked and made a little bit more concise. Um, but it hits all of the suspected segments if we're talking holidays and business people. But I suspect that business people wouldn't be searching for this as much because I just have a feeling that they yeah. would do research in a different manner. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think, yeah, I think that was something that I tried to do initially was try and hit those those various segments, um, and then obviously you've gone in and, and re-edited that. But yeah, how much is how important it is to do that? I think I think it comes back to the A, doesn't it? The audience. It's it's understanding who that audience is and writing for that specific audience. Um, and and I suppose what what we well, I kind of led you on to do there was to to go quite broad with it and and try and hit all those different elements when maybe that's not needed yeah um but you've then, got like all of this here basically i just like to say that like you've yeah. got like all of the things here all i try to do is take the words out and add more like yeah. visual like you, you got desperate and I, I so all i did was try and make it into like oh no so you, wait you've got yeah, desperate to find a way to connect back to the world 
see all I've tried to do is take what are I call it like too many words in a sentence. I'd rather have fewer mm -hmm. words that are just really powerful visual images. So that as soon as someone like visually imagines the scenario that they're going through along with you, like they'll never leave the page because they want an, it's a storytelling session like that. Yeah. And so it, I just try and condense. And you've got all the all the bits here, right? You've literally done it all. All I've tried to do is make it a more like condensed visual bit to try and push the story more and more to make it more evocative mm -hmm. than that. But you've got all of these elements here. Um, I've just like tried to then like lean it down a bit absolutely well you, you're the expert that's why you're here so so let's let's look at the next bit then so then we put the well you put the the kind of top picks in there as like a lasso cta or, or, or something on those lines um we're saying that potentially could have gone higher up but i like what you did here i think i don't think i initially had this in bullet points did i so i think you broke the text up a little bit here yeah so when i'm making a brief for an article one of the things we have in our SOP is how can we best display the data to be the easiest to digest from everyone? And so that requires like not just having paid per word freelance writers because words are often the worst way of displaying data, but they're the easiest to just vomit out without thinking really actively and focused. And so not many people want to read walls of text and paragraphs. So any way that you can take sentences and display them as data, lists, tables, infographics, anything else, will make it easier, one, for people to get the information they need and add value. And two, not everyone is an active reader, they're scan readers. So you need to make it easier to scan because um, if you can take a paragraph, which I think the original one was, uh, depends on factors such as how long you're staying, how much data and call usage you need, mm -hmm. what plan you use the data on, uh, which will impact your decision. Like you can take like half of that out and leave it as the bare bones skeleton and actually add more value in my opinion by just having that as a bulleted list. And then you don't need to like add, for example, will impact your decision on which is the best hiker sim card for you because you've inferred that whilst just showing this here also people's eyes don't really land on paragraphs if they see anything that breaks up paragraphs like bullet points they will naturally land on that and if they can see what you need depends on how long you're staying how much data what you plan to use your data on they know that but you're telling them again and so it cements you as an authority as well as making it easy to communicate and so it will increase conversions and engagement absolutely i think i, I agree with that 100 percent. i mean one of the the biggest challenge is, particularly when you're working with content that's like 3,000, 4,500 words, is how you make that look visually interesting. And I think just, well, I know, just, just blocks of text, walls of text will just turn people away without them even reading it. It's just a visual wall. It's like a barrier that exists that doesn't need to be there. So I think anything like that is, is definitely beneficial. And I think for me, that's why those, those CTAs going quite high up in the content, particularly if they're... They're not huge ticket items are, are very worthwhile because they just make it look more visually appealing. And like you say, for those scan readers, they get that information quick, don't they? So, yeah, I think absolutely. So we're going in towards the end of the intro here. And so this this is still effectively an intro, isn't it, we're talking about? Yeah. This is so still this, part of the intro, yeah. So if they haven't taken action on this top picks block here that we're going to pretend is this big visual Thing that has yeah. the top pick and the budget pick and whatever else then you mentioned don't worry we're still gonna solve your problems we've accounted for all of these factors that the reader understands are important factors so that they may having read this go back and click the right thing here now because this put them at ease but if not you reassure them even further which you've done here you say uh, i'll be covering all of that in the article uh for helping you find the most reputable places to buy i've tried to make that a little bit more sort of personal and like caring it was like here are some of my personal yeah. recommendations for abusal places it sounds like i'm taking accountability for your safety so you can trust me more um so i just try to make like people will trust a personal recommendation of here are the most best or whatever because that sounds like um if you don't bring any personal stuff into it it can sound like your average niche site thing which like most people won't want to make a confident value judgment because they don't know everything and so they don't want to be wrong but if you can make it more personal and more like taking the fall, like these are my personal recommendations, which has a cost to being wrong, right? Because you can't be trusted if you're wrong. But if you're willing to do that, then it engages more trust uh, by doing that. So um, you end with that. Again, these two can also just help the actual clicks to the top actual CCA. And then this is great. I wouldn't change this necessarily. Um, 
this, uh, can, if you have these as bullet points, which I recommend you do, um, mm -hmm. with a heading above it, you can hit feature snippets just from this um, because it, it, some best buyers guides have list snippets. And so uh, if you have the keyword for long tail here, first, you're more likely to hit a snippet than if you have product and then the keyword, at least from what I've seen recently, I don't have any concrete data on that. So you can both strike, you can both strike out for the snippets. And it's just another way to get every link here so that people want to click. Yeah, they might, for example, they might find a niche one that isn't in these top picks that is, you know, they want their video on unlimited calls, they're, they're big in Snapchat. So there's one thing that helps them get on Snapchat whilst they're on holiday. So this is another way of like re-engagement if they haven't got you here. You're basically, basically giving yourself every opportunity to lock in a sale. <laughs> no one's got yeah. any opportunity to leave uh, without making a sale. And then for this, um, I'd be surprised if this didn't do more than like 80% of total conversions and the rest was sort of just adding word count and context for anyone else who wants to cross-reference because I don't think this is a super high activation energy good. So I think most people just want to have the main info. Again, you may even might even be able to shorten this a little bit, but these parts, this... And this, I think, gets you all the way. Um, yeah. So I think this will lock in most of the sales and keep. And I your... think that's a really important point to hammer home. And I know we talked about that on the video last time. Um, you know, just to make sure that people are crystal clear on that. That what we're saying is within the within the the intro section or those first maybe three hundred words or so, we can lock in. We can get the clicks that are going to generate probably eighty percent or more of the sales. And that's something that. I've certainly been working on over the last month, mentioned it in various videos, uh, utilizing these CTAs really, uh, and not just one CTA, we've got the variety there. We've got, we've probably got something quite visual, like you say, from Lasso or, or you know, another, an, you know, or even just custom built blocks. But then we've also got, uh, you know, the, uh, the bullet point lists with links in there. There's a lot going on. Um, and I think, that's why I think this Spear framework works so well, because you're gaining the trust very, very quickly. You're showing the expertise. You're engaging the audience. Like you said, you're hitting those pain points. And I think that's something that I personally need to do a lot more of, is look at it from a psychological point of view. And I think from reading your tweets and watching your stuff, I think that's certainly what you do. You understand the human psychology behind it. And that is something that I just I want to kind of roll out across my content as much as possible, particularly in intros. But we also mentioned last time that the Spear framework, although you kind of um, pitched it initially as as for as using it for intros, it actually applies to the whole the whole article, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, when we first uh, were in the office, there's three of us that came up with it. Um, we did it to write intros. And then we sort of realized that it all applies, which is why when I made the thread and whatever, it goes so off topic, because I'm talking about like general product reviews and stuff. It's, um, it's good for intros, but I think that a lot of this, like you should still keep your audience in mind when you're talking about the products, like the, each one, because if one's the budget pick, the audience segment that's going to be most into that is the one who cares about saving money, but without losing too much utility. So that's how you focus on it on there. Uh, in the same way, if you've really tested the products, you want to joke about this product that you made a mistake with that was embarrassing, but you fixed it now and don't make the same mistakes I did because that builds rapport. Um, they're general good things that can work for an article, but I just think that the, the intro is how you hook people. So it's important to get every single element in as quick as possible, just so that you can make sure that you don't lose anyone who you would solve their needs if they kept reading, but who tragically you lose because you haven't engaged them quick enough with all of those elements. Okay. I mean, we've covered quite a lot there, haven't we? Is, that, is there anything that we've perhaps not meant? I know we've not talked about the whole framework in as much detail as we did last time, and people can obviously go back and watch that. Um, is there anything that we've perhaps not discussed there that, you know, were there any kind of big errors that maybe I made? Because because obviously I, I was on that video with you. We, we we talked about it in depth. And then I went away and uh, obviously tried to write it. Um, I know you said, you know, it was, a, it was a good effort and I appreciate that. Uh, but there were still things that could be improved upon. So people are, you know, going to look at this and go away and, and do the same thing. Is there anything that was kind of obvious and glaring the best content, and it can be told instantly by people, is stuff that is very hard to replicate, is irreplicable. 
And so whenever you, and everyone can tell if they read something, how easy it is to replicate as in not just, you know, uh, is yes, it's difficult to outsource content to writers that understand the psychological stuff because they just want to write stuff particularly and get paid. But also, which line of sales do you go down impacts that? And there are easier and there are more difficult ways, and the more difficult ways are more effective. There are easy ways, right? You just follow the standard AIDA style. Oh, this is your problem, and this is bad. So here. So there's one element here, which wasn't bad, but it's just I think that there can be a more subtle level of sales when you say, and when traveling outside of Europe, I'd go as far as to say it's an essential part of my pre travel prep. Sure, you can buy your Thai SIM card upon arrival rather than purchasing in the UK, dot, dot, dot. It's very standardized sales, and I think people are getting wise to being sold to or increasingly. So mm -hmm. it needs to come from a more subtle, emotional, I'm your friend in this who's done it before. I'm your big brother to help you on your uh, travel adventures. And it can be more subtle than that. Um, you can just mention difficulties you had. You know, I was desperately running around trying to reconnect to the world. Um, naming scenarios that are not you trying to impress someone with the knowledge of the pain points, but just hypotheticals that are separate to you. So they almost act as a third party. So you don't have to back them. They don't have to back you, but they are still effective emotionally. Um, so that is difficult to replicate because it requires more knowledge. So it just can't be outsourced yeah. in a second, right? You actually have to know your stuff, but that allows you to open up the harder to replicate stuff that will instantly engage 10 times as better. Um, and I tell everyone, like, an extra, like, half an hour of research can save you an hour of writing, but not only that, but it can, like, you know, it might be that it takes you two hours to write something that converts at 10%, but it takes four hours to write something that converts at, like, 80%, and, like, I think people think that there's an 80-20 where you, like, there's diminishing returns, but for really competitive affiliate stuff, it's the opposite. There's exponential returns to having something excellent. Yeah. Absolutely. No, that, that's great. That is... Jamie, we've got a question from Keith. Uh, and by the way, guys, if you've got questions, feel free to drop them in the chat because uh, we've, we've, we've probably now, I think, come to the, the, part, the part where we plan to do a little bit of Q&A. So if you have got them, drop them in. So Keith's saying, this is great stuff without giving your own sites away. What, there's always one, isn't there? What live examples can you give of sites that do this extremely well? So I suppose, obviously, you're not talking about your own sites, but... Uh, have you come across sites that have done this particularly well or is it is it not something you tend to see i barely see any good ones yeah. <laughs> no one's I doing it you were properly. Say that. most you were niche sites that. are terrible and most big sites are even worse because they have idr and they don't have to try they just know they'll go yeah. number one and there's no point in them investing 10 times yeah. as long when they can be number one and like convert half as well but it isn't worth it on a calculation standpoint for them to take more effort on this stuff um who does it decently? So basically, if we see any sites that are doing this, they're Jamie's sites. I'm being a hypocrite, there. right? Because I don't do this. I don't write all of my own stuff. So a lot of this stuff doesn't have all these elements. This is all in an ideal, perfect world, but it yeah. isn't always. Uh, like if you if you were on my sites, you wouldn't find this on a lot of the articles. Uh, and it would take a long, we only discovered this within the last year. And so for the two years before we weren't doing this. And so it's a lot of, it would be a lot of work to, to bring those up to the standards that they currently aren't hitting. Um, yeah, Joe has written Wirecar. That's a good example because they really yeah. do test the stuff and they um, they don't even worry about like presenting information super quickly to you. They assume that you've got infinite focus, which is interesting because I don't think people do, but it's clearly working for them and they don't mind it being less sort of high momentum as long as you'll really read it. They're just going for trust over yeah. everything, which is interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. I actually did a video on the wire cutter um, where I think, I think I described it as potentially one of the best examples from an EAT point of view. Because their their processes and and the the lengths that they go to 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 talk about their their editorial processes is second to none. Um, obviously, yes, they've got the high DR as well, but I think they've kind of earned that over time. And uh, yeah, it, it's a Wirecut is an interesting one, obviously, because it's it is a different type of site to what we would potentially be working on. But there's I think there's a lot we can take and learn from that. Um, so guys, we've got, I think we've got about 20 people watching. If you haven't liked the video, by the way, please do like it. Um, it's the first ever affiliate school. And I think, did, Jamie, did you say this is the first time you've ever come on and done a live as well? Yeah, I did a Twitter Spaces for the first time like two weeks ago, but I've, that's the first oh. live thing I've done. This is the first YouTube live. Like, and it was audio only, so this is the first video live. 
Wow. Okay. So, you know, give us the likes, guys. Um, just we, we, if there are any more questions, pop them in. Um, but before that, Jamie, I just wanted to touch on what your plans are for, for next year. I know, um, I think I saw that you're going to be speaking at the affiliate gathering. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's May 2023, the 19th of May. Um, uh, thank you to Doug Cunnington for putting me in touch or putting Carl uh, Broadbent, the the holder of uh, affiliate gathering in touch, and then we speaking for a bit, and then he asked if I was interested in speaking. I said sure, I'm happy to do that. And now there's a lot of great people speaking. Uh, I recommend that everyone goes to affiliategathering.com. I think that's the website. If it's not, then just type in affiliate gathering, it'll come up. I think it is. Affiliate, I think yeah, affiliategathering.com. Uh, yeah, it's a really good event. Did you go last year, Jamie? No, I didn't. I didn't know no, anything about affiliate marketing communities until this year. So I missed out on all yeah. the fun stuff. So I just wasn't on Twitter or anything. It was my first ever affiliate marketing event last year. Um, and it was, considering it was the first time that Carl had put this event together, it was a really good experience. If nothing else, just to meet other affiliates, other, mm -hmm. other people doing niche sites, working on niche sites. It was, um, and the talks were great. Um, and I'm sure your talk will be fantastic, but the the fringe events and and all the the, the little conversations that you have here, there, and everywhere are re, you know really really valuable, and the connections that you make, like I say, so it's pretty exciting stuff. Um, Eric's saying uh, that he's, he's sorry he's late; he's on a train right now, so uh, don't know how that would go. He's going to catch the replay later, I think. Um, so so okay, so you've got affiliate gathering next year. What else? Any have you got any particular plans or targets? for 2023 do you do you kind of set yourself targets because you've gone from strength to strength this year i'll let you if you want to talk numbers that's up to you i'm not going to put you on the spot but um is that is that how you work do you work from like a a, a financial target point of view or yeah you... i don't do this for the banner i'll be honest with you <laughs> i'm doing this to get this money um but yeah we uh, at the beginning of the year i said god can we grow these things to make 40 grand a month by the end of the year um and if we continue sort of near enough to what we did in, in November. We'll do that. Um, but now it's, it's six figures by the end of June 2023 is the goal. Wow. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, and I'm sure you're going to get there because your trajectory has been phenomenal really this year. Uh, and yeah, that's got a bit of catching up to do. So. <laughs> you're catching up though. You're doing, you're, you're right up there though. Yeah, I mean, November was a good month. November was my best ever month in terms of affiliate revenue. Um, and, and, you know, it, hopefully it continues. But uh, yeah, the, the reason I ask is because I'm, I'm about to put together a video looking at reviewing targets from this year and targets for next year. And I think some people say that you shouldn't set financial monetary targets. But for me, it kind of just makes sense. Uh, it, it, it's not the be all and end all. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, lose sleep over the fact that I wouldn't hit a monetary target as long as I'd done everything in my power to get there. Because um, obviously, you know, Google updates can destroy a site and, and things like that, and they're quite unpredictable. But for me, it's just the it's the easiest tangible thing to to target and and report on. So, uh, right, we've got some questions. We're going to finish soon. We're nearly at the end, guys. Uh, what's this one? Probably should have read it before I put it on. But <laughs> what do you think about the way Wirecutter writes best off posts? They're quite different from everyone else. Do you want to tackle that, Jamie? Or yeah, they're some of the best in class, and um, they sacrifice immediate media in your face sales um, for real expertise building in depth reviews. That basically, like I mentioned before, the best stuff is the least replicable. Theirs is the least replicable because they put more time and they're willing to spend more time and money on their reviews than everyone else is and so that's kind of in the same way uh, i'll give you an example so many people just want to hit the high value keywords in a niche and they lose on topical authority and the people that win are the ones who are willing to buy, willing to write the loss leading keywords that they make a loss on because they're willing and they understand the bigger picture that is all right if i write these pieces that aren't going to rank they will help me gain the authority that shows that i really am an authority on these really high competitive stuff of which the main key in this niche makes three grand a month on its own but they don't see it as a whole topic they just see how do i get this done in the same way why can't i see something as i can spend more time and effort than everyone else to make it the least replicable and do things that no one else wants to do in the same way that no one else wants to write 100 posts that no one's gonna or aren't gonna break even and so in in a way it's just this will only become more important right because as the ai makes it 
everything that's easy to replicate is going out the window. The only way to be un AI destroyable is to have stuff that AI can't do. Strong value judgments, new opinions that are maybe against the conventional opinion. I think that the, the rules around featured snippets will be relaxed in, um, at the moment you have to conform to get a snippet. I think that will be relaxed to show opposing opinions that doesn't exist yet. I have a feeling it will with the age of AI to sort of agreeing and not being able to generate new insight to prioritize humans. In the same way, AI can't write things that not much literature exists on. So topical authority will become even more important because there's just not much information around these not many such yeah. topics. So you need to do that in the same way. Affiliate guides that don't add anything new aren't really in depth and don't show real, real, real stuff are oh, very easy to replicate. Anyone can get the spec sheet of Amazon and the Amazon description and put it through a rewriting tool. So yeah, why can't I do the least replicable things? And 90% of the time, if it's difficult to replicate, Google wants it. Google doesn't want new sites to be scalable. It's okay if you're an expert and you run a micro news site and you really add value and you bring the stuff to the world, then it will allow you to make money from affiliate revenue. But if you're just someone who wants to start 10 sites and 10 niches and outsource all the content stuff that you're not an expert in, you're more likely to face the wrath of a Google update. So uh, going off on a tangent, but the way that Wirecutter writes best of posts is the way that's going to make sure that they're around in 10 years' time. People need to take a long-term view and uh, sacrifice immediate gains for longer-term structural benefits and building the moat uh, in the same way that Wirecutter do. But it can be applied across topical authority and everything else as well. I mean, that, that's an answer. That, I mean, I'd love to put that into a YouTube short, but the answer was so comprehensive it wouldn't fit. <laughs> but that was, uh, that was spot on. Thanks, Jamie. Um, and Keith goes on to say, ironically, I met more display ad people than affiliates at affiliate gathering, but good event. I'll tell you what, I just, like I said, I've just come back from affiliate world in Bangkok, and, and that was the exact same thing there. There were, there were not many affiliates, as in like niche site affiliates there. There were a lot of paid uh, again, maybe a few display ads, but a lot of PPC, a lot of social, TikTok, that sort of stuff. But uh, I don't know. I, I felt like I met quite a lot of affiliates at Affiliate Gathering, so uh, looking forward to it. Um, Joe says, how do you weigh up doing quick intros, 200 words or less, versus doing long intros with all the whistles, like your method will have a proper intro, link jump, etc. Is it info versus money post? So I know you, you, you kind of mentioned this yourself, Jamie, that you don't necessarily apply this framework to every single piece of content that goes out on your sites. So how do you kind of make the decision on which ones to uh, apply it to? Um, the level of activation energy. Um, it may well be that you shouldn't have a top picks block for something that you know is such a difficult sell and such a high activation, high life change product that it would just put people off to be like, why are you trying to sell this to me now? We've only just got started in this long sales procedure um, where you just like the intro is more just like a thousand word buyer's guide to get people understanding. Like, uh, I, I'm not in cars, but if you're trying to sell someone a van, I think you'd have to, you know, <laughs> think about how you're going to do a thousand words of introductory guides for what to consider, what to not consider, what things matter, what will help you five years down the line. So you don't just think about when you buy the van, the, whatever, you know what it is yeah. um, for info versus money. Um, if it's a snippet at the beginning, you want to try and hit that fairly quickly. I saw Niche Campus, you actually put a uh, poll out where a lot of people said things that I don't agree with. Um, I would just, I'm happy to repeat the H1 with a H2 and then a direct answer. And then if um, the first paragraph, I'm just hitting that. We have a custom block that separates it. So it is the HTML is as clean as possible. And then if you need to expand on that, then and or add any opinions, whatever, you don't want to add any personal opinion in a, in a snippet hit. And then you, if you want to add any more context, any examples from there, do that outside of the custom HTML block and then keep going from there. But the intro itself can be a lot shorter. If you cover a lot of different topics, for example, um, let's say how to clean a carpet with a vacuum and that's, you know, the, how to do that. You hit the snippet quickly, but in the intro before you just say something like not only we'll also cover the best products for this, uh, as well as tips around X, Y, Z type of thing. So, so that you've got the different elements in the same way that you have the, the, um, the products you've got number one, number two, number three in the links, you have the different elements of H2 so that if anyone is still interested in a specific element of that article that isn't apparently obvious from the title of the informational piece, they will be glued to the whole page because they're interested in one, one that one particular thing. Um, so you can sort of capture that engagement and make sure people understand exactly what's going to come up 
immediately. So the intro for an informational post is more, in my opinion, geared towards being like, this is what's coming up. Read the whole thing. Whereas the affiliate stuff is, these are your options. Take it or leave it. We'd rather you click something. <laughs> Guys, um, I hope you appreciate what you're seeing and witnessing here because I think I've never heard, it's very rare that I've seen anyone talk about this stuff the way that you do, Jamie. And I, I think um, there's, there's real value coming in here. Uh, so if, you've, if you like Ariel and you were late, you better rewatch this video when it, when, it, when it finishes because there's been some absolute gold um, talks about here. And Jamie, you also talk about fantastic topics such as this over on Twitter. Um, I think that's probably the, is that the best place where people can, can find you? It's uh, at Jamie underscore IF. You do have a YouTube yeah. channel too, don't you? Yeah, I need to do the latest income report and become more active on there. Um, I'm going to do uh, a huge announcement, the biggest one of my whole life and career, this hopefully this week on Twitter. That's very important to me. I hope it, 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 people are happy for me. It's going to come this week. Um, so if you are interested in what ends up happening with my life and how it may affect you, because I'll be there to help everyone else that's interested, uh, follow me on Twitter. There's a very, very big announcement and I'm very excited about it, but I can't tell you yet. But, um, based on our call, uh, our, our texting before this, Jason knows what it is. <laughs> only, only vaguely. It's, uh, it's still going to be news to me, I think, as well. Um, I didn't know you were going to say that either. So uh, that's, that's great. An exclusive, an affiliate school exclusive. That's my short. <laughs> that's the, that's the short to create from this. So, um, Jamie, seriously, thank you so much for coming on and being a part of this first affiliate school YouTube live. I've, I've really enjoyed it. I think you've shared some fantastic tips. Um, if, if people are showing their appreciation in, in, in the chat, uh, like I said, guys, like the video. Go and check out Jamie's Twitter. He's, uh, he, he's, he's very generous and shares so much stuff over there. And uh, if it, to be honest, if it probably wasn't for people like Jamie on Twitter, I definitely wouldn't be on there because it's a bit of a mixed bag. But Jamie's one of the good guys over there. So, so make sure you do go and follow. Jamie, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I might put that video on one more time for the people. <laughs> at the start just because it, it took me you know a good 20 minutes to, to edit it, it was well above my pay grade and of importance to do that i was impressed with that you know like it, it's a historic moment it's the first youtube live for the show so uh, <laughs> it, it had to be done but uh, seriously jamie thank you so much thank you for having me the search intent is like yeah this person is looking for this So basically it's S-P-E-A-R. But audience drills into that more. And you have to think, what is this person looking for exactly? What's their burning need? And is it like one level deeper? Now, Jamie, what I'm gonna do or attempt to do is to take your framework and write uh, an intro, which is probably redefining my idea of an intro.